Welcome everyone, my name's Stephen Brooks and I've created the Electrical Protection Part 2 course. I've tried to write the course to make it accessible to everyone, including people without an electrical engineering background. Electrical protection is a key element in all electrical systems and ensures that the electrical network can operate safely and efficiently. This two hour long protection course will introduce you to some more protection systems with a particular focus on circuit breaker protection transformer protection and SCADA. I hope you enjoy the course and get something out of it. Most substations use DC to supply the protection and control systems so that when the AC supply fails we can continue to monitor and control the network. In the first section we look at all of the DC systems that you will come across inside a typical transmission level substation including the basic architecture of the DC system and how we size the batteries that keep the supply going. In the next section, we look at circuit breaker protection. We start by looking at the circuit breaker auxiliary switches, which are a key component in any protection system. We then look at the main circuit breaker protections, including trip circuit supervision. As we've said, the circuit breaker is critical for clearing faults on the electrical system, but sometimes things go wrong and the circuit breaker fails to clear the fault. In the next section, we will look at how we detect this critical situation and what actions we need to take to ensure that the electrical system is protected from a collapse. When a fault occurs on the system, we trip the circuit breaker and clear it. For certain types of faults in electrical systems, we sometimes want to reclose the circuit breaker to get the customers connected again. This principle is called auto reclosure, and in the next section, we look at all the auto reclosure equipment that you will come across. When we close circuit breakers, we have to ensure that the two systems that we are connecting have similar parameters, otherwise, the circuit breaker may get damaged. To do this, we use synchronizing equipment, and in the next section, we look in detail at the manual synchronizing equipment that we use and how the automatic synchronizing equipment gets integrated into the closed circuit. Transformers are the most expensive device that we use on the electrical network. Looking after them is one of the main goals when we design protection systems. In the first of five sections on transformers, we look at some of their basic design features, including how we connect the windings and how these connections lead to different vector groups. In the next section, we will look in detail at how transformers are constructed and how the cooling system of a transformer affects its rating. We then go on to look at some of the transformer devices that we use to make sure that the transformer is operating within its parameters. Transformer tap changes are used to alter the voltage on the network. In the next section, we will look at the main types of tap changes that we use, including no load and unload. In the final sections on transformers, we will look in detail at how we protect the transformer. In the first section, we will introduce the principles behind bias transformer differential protection. We will look at the bias curve to try and understand why it's required. In the final section on transformers, we will look at how we connect the current transformers for the various differential schemes that you will come across, and then complete the section by looking at how we pull all the transformer protections together. SCADA systems are critical to the operation of most transmission substations and they are used to provide control and monitoring functions. We will look at the typical architecture behind a SCADA system and see how we connect all the primary plant and other systems to the LANs and RTUs that interface with a SCADA system.